September 23rd, NFL stadiums were filled for the first time since the national tragedy. And appropriately, no venue displayed more patriotism than that of the one which houses America's team. While a return to normalcy would be cause enough to celebrate, Dallas fans also witnessed another milestone on Emmett Smith's run to immortality. Emmett Smith down at the 19-yard uh, line, and Emmett Smith has now passed Barry Sanders into second place on the NFL's all-time rushing list. Number two. For the Cowboys, the celebration would be short-lived. The Chargers, one of the NFL's surprise teams, punished the Cowboys early on. And five Dallas turnovers left them in a 17-point hole. While the Cowboys surrendered nearly 350 yards through the air, they called upon their own passing game, with Anthony Wright starting at quarterback for the injured Quincy Carter, firing three scoring strikes to stay in the game. Wright play action, back to throw, deep ball, down the middle for Rocket in stride at the 35 and running away. They won't even come near him. Touchdown, Wright to Ismail. But eight points was as close as Dallas would come in the fourth quarter. Hand off to Tomlinson, hands it back on a reverse left. It's Dwight at the 15, bumps at the 10, breaks a tackle into the end zone. Touchdown, San Diego. Now I think you can put it away. And for the first time in franchise history, the Cowboys would start consecutive seasons at 0-2. gentlemen welcome to the day after we are in dallas cowboys locker room slash training room this is really not too bad but we've only played two games you guys show up probably about week nine maybe ten to look pretty rough in here young man to my right rookie phenom quincy Carter out of georgia Quincy released the ball, thumb hit the helmet. Now he's in here next to me. But he's gonna be all right. Big things coming from this young man. And if you're wondering what's happening to me, just a little uh, tweak of the MCL. You see this big hump right here? We're getting ready to go get that scan. As far as the game is concerned, you know, obviously I'm not happy that we lost the football game. Uh, at this particular point in time, the season doesn't end after two games. Uh, on offense, we had three TD passes. I think that's, uh, you know, good. So, uh, overall, I thought Anthony performed uh, well for his first shot out of the, out of the box uh, this year. But the turnovers, you can't turn the ball over and win. We have been not good on third down, so it's something that we have to get better at. Uh, and uh, it's an area if I feel that if we can get the third downs uh, more manageable, then we'll have a chance to play pretty good defense. Just uh, doing a little ultrasound on uh, Joey's ankle here. He's had a little ongoing foot sprain last couple of weeks. Try to get him better. It's going to take a little time, but it, nothing he'll miss any time with right now. George Teague over here. Uh, you know, when uh, you play this game for about 10 years, your back tends to uh, stiff up tonight, the day after the game. <laughs> How are you going to talk when you got ice on your neck? <laughs> the aches which plague the players are physical, but Coach Campo suffers from a different pain caused by a brewing quarterback controversy invented by a hungry media. Uh, you have one quarterback in one game, you have another quarterback in another game, and you still got the same same record. <laughs> you, ain't got, you don't have one win, so you, you, you're looking for a combination that will give you the best chance to win. But you'd like to see Anthony get another shot. Well, I, personally, I believe the man deserves another shot. Let me unequivocally say this. None of our players are going to determine who plays. The coaching staff's going to determine who plays. So if that was said last night, Emmett, we make the decision who plays. Do you feel like you did enough yesterday to warrant some competition? As far as uh, causing any kind of uh, controversy or anything like that, you know, I'm not going to sit here and try to start anything. Uh, if I'm given another opportunity, I'm going to try to go out and do even better than what I did yesterday. Players that are out on the field have one job to do, and that's to take care of what they do. And the coaching staff has a lot more experience determining whether or not a guy can play or a guy can't play. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks.
coaches, of course, start into the game plan of the next week at that point. We have a 24-hour rule here. 24 hours after the game, whether you won or lost, it's gone and you move on to the next ball game. For the players, Monday is a conditioning and maintenance day, a chance to work out the kinks from the previous afternoon's game. For the coaches, it is a chance to improve the team by holding a tryout for defensive end Byron Frisch. You were in college. Did you play any other positions? Just defensive end. Yeah, defensive end. Uh, How about high school? Middle linebacker. Okay. Where are you from? San Diego. When we lost Ebenezer Ekebaum, we started looking uh, at uh, some defensive ends, and, and uh, Byron jumped up because he was a third-round draft pick. Get your other shoes on. Let's go yeah. to work. <laughs> 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 Good athlete. Yeah. We're going to continue to massage the bottom of our roster because you have to try to upgrade your team from the 53 men up. And it's not always what you do with the uh, top guys over a period of time. It's more uh, some guys that you massage at the bottom two years later are your players. Thank you. Um, appreciate it. Okay. After weeks of scouting, it takes less than a one-hour workout for Frisch to be signed to the 53-man roster just in time to participate in afternoon wind sprints. You just got to keep working at it. We're real close. A lot of good players got to come together as a team. A lot of good players got to come together as a team. Tuesday is an off day for the players, but this is a team comprised primarily of youngsters looking to improve. And a lot of them spend their one free day in the weight room, including the newest cowboy. A lot of the younger guys utilize a day off to do some extra things, things they need to work on. So when we come in here, there's a lot of teaching going on. These guys don't know how to win yet. They don't know how to lose yet. Now you're trying to teach them what the process is. So two or three years from now, when they're successful on the football field, they know the routine and you reap the benefits of that. Tony's got great leg strength and he's a running back. He's a little bit undersized for a running back, but he understands how strong he needs to be. So he's here doing that. It's one of the reasons he's still here is that he works at it. He makes up for anything he might not have size-wise with strength. Heel on squeeze, that's it. Perfect. Good. the best. Five without, five without. It's really not a dungeon in here. The players in the weight room aren't the only ones focused on body images. Starting safety George Teague spends his day off working in the women's lingerie store he and his wife Consuela own and operate. It's a business that grew out of necessity. We always had to travel a long way to go find a specific type of bra that would fit. And there was never anywhere to go. Everybody always hears about A cups, B cups, C cups. And so we go all the way up to a J cup, and that's very big. I used to be here all the time. In the off season, I was like here every single day. It's a 38 double F. They look good to me, and they're actually our biggest seller, so those are the ones I like the most. They're pretty nice. Here, we, we want to uh, reach the needs of all size women. How can you be around something so feminine when you're on Sundays out? trying to knock somebody's head off and stuff like that. So it doesn't really go, and I understand it, but uh, I do catch a lot, a lot of heat uh, for owning a store like this. That's true. Coach Campo needed some support of his own during today's press conference as he outlined the week's goals. Okay, good morning. Let me just talk a little bit about uh, Philadelphia. Uh, first of all, uh, we should be extremely excited to, uh, number one, get an opportunity to play again uh, after the tough start, especially against a good football team 
and especially against a football team in the NFC East. So it's a big night for us, ESPN, uh, Sunday night, and uh, we're excited to, to have the opportunity to, to uh, compete in that type of arena. Unfortunately, no one is interested in Campo's strategy for the Eagles. The press was looking for a story, and they have settled on the quarterback situation. What I would say to Emmett is, uh, Emmett needs to go out and run the football, and we'll back the defense off for him and let him perform, and, and I, I don't think there's any problem. Will you talk to him just to clear the air? Now, let me just say this. I love Emmett Smith. He's one of my guys, but I don't want to say any more about it. The, 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 the situation the way it is right now came about because of an injury to, to Quincy Carter, and that's the bottom line. If Quincy's healthy, we go about our business and go from there. We have a very competitive media uh, in Dallas. It's a little different here than it is in some places in the country. But at the same time, when you've got young quarterbacks out there, the maturation process is probably going to be a little slower than having a veteran out there. So uh, consequently, if one of them gets hurt, the other one comes in and plays well, it's a dual-edged sword. Hey, can I ask you guys a question? Did I not say I didn't want to talk about this? Anymore? <laughs> guys, i got to get going. Have a good day. Escaping the media to draw up the week's game plan is a welcome relief. For while the players have the day off, the coaching staff has to have the playbook finished before they leave Tuesday night. Tuesday is an off day, and of course that's our big game planning day. We're working uh, pretty much till 10 o'clock at night, uh, getting the plan put together to present to the team on Wednesday. For Mike Zimmer and his defensive assistants, the focus for this week is how to slow down Philadelphia quarterback Donovan McNabb. Anytime he sees just a normal rush and he feels pressure, he's gone. We fit up our defenses to whatever they do offensively. Now, specific things like the ability of Donovan to scramble, uh, to run with the football, you know, we'll add a, a spy technique or something that, you know, keeps track of where he is so that we don't get in a situation where we're rushing up the field and all of a sudden here goes Donovan running with the football. Normally, we would tell this in when he got this action that he just settled down and, and looked to play, you know, the shovel coming back at him. He's got to play the quarterback. But because of number five being back there, we want him to take the quarter. You see what I'm saying? He's got to see because it. he'll run it. All right, Glenn, last time now when we played these guys, we had a we were effective with the run game. We got ran for a couple hundred yards against him. So when we do show this kill motion, we call with the tight end coming down, we'll play action and throw the ball. We'll have to move uh, Joey from side to side because we lost... Uh, a rocket in the last game for a couple of weeks, so we'll try and get him going. And the other part is that we're going to be uh, putting in a couple of new plays and play actions because they've been doing a lot of uh, a blitzing. So basically, play action and let, uh, let Emmett run with the ball. By the time the players return on Wednesday, the playbooks are completed. Meetings on the road to Philadelphia start early Wednesday morning, beginning with the special teams. Getting ready for Philadelphia. They have gone from a couple years ago, probably the worst kicking team that I've seen in a while, to where now they're extremely sound, uh, consistent, productive, have nice talent, and play well. They're just a, they're a good group. The thing that has made them a better group is when they added Brian Mitchell. Brian Mitchell is the all-time leading kick returner in the history of the NFL. That, that's the history of the NFL. We've made plays against him. He's made plays against us. I always look forward to going against them because it's good competition. Those players not on that unit fill time until the team meeting at 9. I got you beat. Yeah. Of course you do. Take that. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great things about the NFL is that we have an opportunity, especially after a ball game that we're not happy with, to come back out and play another football game. And that's what we have the opportunity to do this weekend. And the exciting thing about it is it's the Philadelphia Eagles. This is the NFC East. And we talk about the NFC East now, that gets my blood boiling. The excitement of playing that kind of a ball game. And not only do we have that opportunity, but we have the opportunity to play on national television on Sunday night ESPN. So you got an opportunity to show the improvement that we're making from week to week. Now, let's talk a little bit about Philly. First of all, offensively, it starts with McNabb. Now, McNabb is a little bit inconsistent. McNabb can have a great ball game. He can have an average ball game throwing the ball. 
But the thing that makes him so dangerous is ability to run the football. Defensively, an aggressive, aggressive football team. They are a blitz team. They'll blitz sometimes seven, eight, nine times in a row. This is the best defense we've played against in the three football games. So we've got a tremendous challenge offensively. Now, let's talk about what we have to do. We've got to contain McNabb. Don't give him a chance to make plays with his feet. Make him throw the football. No big plays. Guys, the big plays last week was what got us. Now, last thing I want to say is this. There's nothing that I want more, guys, than to win this football game against the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday night. So all of us have got to have that approach to the game. we got to want to get it done, and we will get it done. No one thinks we're going to win the football game but us. It's done with the team, guys. It's everybody together on this thing, okay? All right, let's have a great day. Let's get to work. You learn to play the game playing the game. I really believe that you practice how you play on Sunday. Our practices are pretty intense, and uh, there's some different thoughts on that, but I feel it's important that we do that. Come on, Marcus, make that play. Run the damn play again. Get up by the ball. Get on the ball. Oh, 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 oh. Start that period over again. Start it over again. Let's go. Come on, let's get the damn thing right. Let's go. Start the majority of Wednesday's practice is spent struggling to master the new plays. Come on, Michael, pay attention, dang card. Start it over again. Start it over again. Come on, whoa, 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 and the week's game plan begins to take shape. That's good. Good, 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 good. Y'all look like you know what you're doing now. Finally. That's good work today. We've got to keep the tempo going. We've got to keep the tempo going. The way you get better is you practice how you're going to play on Sunday. The team you're playing this weekend now is playing with a lot of confidence, playing with a lot of confidence, playing at home on national television. The only way we're going to be able to do what we need to do is we got to match them. We're the best conditioned team in the league. So set your mindset right now that we're going to take the fight to them. Good work today. Captains, call them up. Let's go. Crazy dogs on three. One, two, three. Crazy dogs. You heard that? You heard that? For Coach Campo, practice ends as it always does with another press conference. This time on the side of the field. I thought we had a good practice. I thought the guys came out with a lot of enthusiasm. I think we got some things accomplished. I think there's a little bit of excitement with playing Philadelphia. While the location may have changed, the questions have well, not. Yeah. Again, as uh, far as the quarterback position is concerned, Quincy threw before practice. I thought that he made market improvement, uh, probably not enough to start. So uh, unless he makes a miraculous recovery tomorrow, uh, Anthony Wright will be going on Sunday. So uh, that's the situation there. We, uh, we're looking forward to the ball game. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good afternoon. No changes have been made at cornerback. No. And uh, we're going to, it'll be ice selling. The Cowboys spend the majority of Thursday in meetings. We're going to know what they're going to do as you watch the tape and you get the formations and you get the down and distance, you're going to get a feel for what they're going to do. There's going to be things that we've got to do as far as rushing the passer this week to take care of how they protect and also take care of McNabb you have to work those type of rushes because it's going to prepare you for Sunday. Be aware now. They want to bring pressure. Bring pressure from the weak side, apparently, in this formation. Seven sacks against Seattle now. Back-to-back -back sacks. Not a good feeling. This turn-in is a lot different than what we've seen in the past. We've got to get this handled. We've got to get the reroute out of this guy. And then we've got to sink right there with that guy. We don't get that secure. He'll be back in the Pro Bowl again. All right? We've got to get that secure. It is not just the coaches and players that must prepare for the Eagles game. The entire organization is focused on the trip to Philadelphia. And then as far as, uh, you know, we had the breakfast going from 9.30 to 11.30. Were y'all able to set it up this year where you had the, the waffle station as opposed to, I know last year they weren't able to work that out. And then we'll have the pregame meal at uh, 4 p.m. And again, if you can have that, you know, ready to go pretty much at 3.30. Coach, when you look at the Eagle defense, Coach Campo deals with the press today from the comfort of his office, teleconferencing with Philly reporters. 
How about your defense, Coach? Well, you know, we're a we're a no-name group, and uh, we're, we're, we scramble around and get after it pretty good. We'll play in the run much better, which I think is a real plus. It gives us a chance to be in football games. But uh, as a group, our guys are playing extremely hard, and I think that's the important thing. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot. As the players get taped up and dressed for the afternoon practice, it all seems like old hat for a 12-year veteran like Emmett Smith. Smith and safety Darren Woodson are the last links to the Cowboy team that won three Super Bowls in four seasons, dominating the NFL in the early 1990s. A team that boasted eventual Hall of Famers like Michael Irvin and Troy Aikman, the most recent examples in a great lineage of players that make up one of the most storied franchises in all of sport. The Cowboys have made their way to three more Super Bowls than any other team in league history, and being part of that legacy makes Smith a living legend to his young teammates. I want y'all to remember this picture here. <laughs> the greatest fella ever Chris, just walked the earth. Just tell the the Man, you got to rabbit his mind. The walked the earth. Besides yeah, no. God, okay, okay. Yeah, I, him, I, I, I mean, that's all the I'm talking this guy here. No. This is the dude now. They say I, I kiss up to him. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. him no mind. Great practice day. Great practice day. Let's get something accomplished. Let's make Philadelphia a suburb of Dallas. Make Philadelphia a suburb of Dallas. Philadelphia Eagles now, Sunday night football. National, 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 baby. All everybody looking at you. Lynn Scott, Deion Sanders called, said he better get going in that jersey. Oh. You want to talk with the white Man. Deion? You can say, Deion, you're a has-been. I'm a now. Deion, a has-been. Get back off me. That's that stiff arm. <laughs> get back off me. As the players get more comfortable with the game plan, the atmosphere seems a bit more relaxed. See, I'm not just a running back. Keep I'm tired of telling them that. And the coaches are nothing but complimentary. Good, good. good. Nobody runs the football on us. Oh, yeah. That's the way he's stepping at Dimitri. Hey, that's it, Dimitri. There we go. There we go. Nobody runs the ball on us. That's it. That's it. Good job, coach. That's it, Michael Wiley. Nice job, that win. Nice job, Pepe. That's it, Pepe. That's it, baby. That's it, Emmett. Good hit. Good find a way to find a hole, baby. I like that play. I like that one. That's a good one. I like that play. With another good day of work, the team's confidence is soaring. We got a chance to go up there on national television on a Sunday night in front of all your peers. You ought to be excited. And I'm excited. Let's get this thing going a little bit. We need to get a little bit more enthusiasm going to go up there and get us one. We got to go up there and take the fight to them. We're going up there to play football and get after their ass. Let's put the thing together. Fight on three. One, two, three. Fight. Despite the busy and tiring work week, many of the players find time to host a hometown huddle for the kids from the Salvation Army and Boys and Girls Clubs of Dallas. I want to say thank you for having me today. I know I'm not Emma Smith. <laughs> I am not Emmitt Smith, but how many Cowboy fans do we have in here today? You know how you guys have a school book, like a math book? But we have the same kind of book, and we're in school every day, just like you guys. So where is all our work being done? In the classroom, right? Same thing you guys are going to have to do. So if I can tell you one thing today is school is very, very important. Can I open it up for some questions? Go ahead, right <laughs> no matter what the age, the questions are always the same. Uh, who's the starting quarterback? Well, yeah, we have to watch it on Sunday. We'll find out on Sunday who the starting quarterback is. I want to see something. We're looking for a running back. I want to see some moves around here. I want to see some moves. Oh, beautiful. Uh, I love children. I've got six children of my own, so I enjoy this. Uh, I love being around the kids, and there's so much enthusiasm. I want our football team to play with the same enthusiasm as these kids are playing with today. One thing that, that you have to understand is that people don't have to give their time. 
And when people give their time for something, that's as important as anything that you can ever do. When you have the opportunity to give your time for somebody, I hope you'll be able to do that. And just, I want to hear one thing from you guys. Let's yell, go Cowboys. We need your help to get our guys going. On three, go Cowboys. How about that? One, two, three. All right. By Friday morning, most of the organization is prepared for the 1,500-mile trip from Irving, Texas to Philadelphia. The Cowboys take great pride in being a first-class organization, providing for their players comfort and well-being on every level, and how they look and feel on the road is no exception. Who's yeah, doing it? Uh, I think it's, uh... And by the end of the day, every small detail must be buttoned up. You know, check on, on setting up that, uh, you know, police escort as far as taking our, our buses over to the stadium and then, um, you know, after the game, out to the airport as well. Okay, going back to the rest of practice. I'm going to tell you what, fellas, you guys bust your ass. You keep doing things right and good things are going to happen. Just keep practicing the same way you have. You're doing a hell of a job, not making mistakes, playing to run great, we're getting in the right places. And what are you smiling about? I'm trying to be nice here. And I'm telling you now, I'm, I'm serious about this. We are busting our ass at practice and doing things right. And I'm telling you, the people in this room, you deserve to win. You deserve to keep playing your butts off. And you deserve to be one of the best defenses in the NFL. Third and nine, base to middle. At Friday's walkthrough, the team appears unfocused, showing the first signs of being ill-prepared to handle the formidable road game ahead. One, two, three. Let's get it together. Yeah, that is weak. That is so weak. One, two, three. Oh, well, who are you? Oh, you, 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 you Philly, I love them now. Don't get me wrong, but it's an ugly crowd. You know, I'm from the East. I love it. Uh, they they come in and they're they're ready to get after you. Philly, loud, ugly, ugly crowd. They have no idea how it's going to be when we go to Philadelphia and play on on Sunday night. At that, it's going to be really heated and intense, and I'm not really sure if they're really ready for that yet <laughs> or not. We're probably not as uh, well-versed as we could be because of the young players we have on our ball club, but I think they'll find it out relatively quickly. Guys, we got to understand the urgency of what's going to happen on Sunday night. The Eagles are going to come after our throat. We better be going after their throat. We better come out with a with a, the frame of mind that we're going to take the fight to them. Get yourself ready to play. We take a business trip this weekend. Let's make sure that we get the business done in our favor. I'm tired of this staying close stuff. Let's get after them. Let's win the damn football game. Captains, get on in there and get it going. Let's go. Transporting a football team across the country is no small job. It requires moving over 10,000 pounds of equipment and nearly 150 personnel. On the three-hour flight, the players get a chance to review their playbooks or just kick back. Cowboys Hotel, the players are greeted by the ESPN production team that will broadcast the game, waiting to speak with some of the key personnel. Short, it shows more of the gray. Yeah, I'm going to let it grow out. Just for men works great. Mine's your color. I went to a medium brown, just because to let the sun bleach. And you leave out. just a tint of gray. Well, the tint of gray has grown in. It's time to do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Before the interviews, the team has one final walkthrough. But due to time constraints, this one is held in the Paris Ballroom rather than Veteran Stadium. Space Volcano, three zone. Good, guys. Good to see you. Good to see you, guys. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Nice to see you. How are you? Nice to see you. My grandfather? 
<laughs> your dad. My, my, no, my grandfather. Not my dad, my okay, grandfather. Okay, got it. Got it. You might have to you take that know. same approach. About 50 pounds. Get out. Jeez. You uh -huh. couldn't have lost 50 pounds. Oh, I did. Pounds. I did. Man, I cinched up. I had it to lose. <laughs> Good. I, I feel tight all over. Feel great. <laughs> Fit. Ready to go. Tight all over. Susie, you're sure doing fine. Stem, 46.59. Set. Ready. Hit. Good. Right there. That's it. You're still doing basic teaching Absolutely. every every day of every week. And that's why, you know, you look at it and you say, well, it's going to be tough against Philadelphia because we've got a young group that's we're still we're still coaching and teaching. And, and uh, I think that's a true statement. But at the same time, there's not a lot of difference between teams in the league. <laughs> I mean, I the favorite topic of conversation is still the quarterback controversy sparked by Emmett Smith's post-game comments the previous week. You had your meeting with Dave deciding on the quarterback situation? No, we haven't actually met yet. Dave didn't realize, <laughs> Dave, Dave, Dave didn't realize that uh, I was appointed the general manager. <laughs> Has Jerry realized that yet? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's nice to have a guild. You know, number two running back in the history of the National Football League names you the, the quarterback. Yeah, it's always good to have you know, your teammates uh, supporting you like that. But, um, you know, like uh, Coach Campbell said, he's not the guy to make the decision. <laughs> Hey, Darren, have you noticed how much uh, younger your teammates are getting? Yeah. What's it like? Yeah. We make a lot of mistakes, you know, offensively and defensively because of the youth we have. But I think this is the funnest year I've had in five years because, you know, these guys are going to make mistakes, but they're also going to bust their ass out there. And they work hard. I might be having more fun with the guys that I have right now because they keep me young. You sound just like Darren Woodson. He said the same exact thing. We talked about last year for the record. Right. And... At that time, you were behind Barry. Has the reality of what you're about to embark on getting closer? It's still, on, it's still not close enough yet. I mean, I have to be, man, somewhere around 100 yards or uh, 50 yards away before I can say, okay, it's about to go down. But right now, I'm too far away. I'm like out. this last game, you could kind of taste it. Taste it? I got a little flavor of what it was like. <laughs> Is there anything that you feel has slowed down or you can't do or are you, are you still at your peak? I think I'm still at my peak. I really do. Uh, one thing I cannot do, I, I'm, about six years ago, I, I was able to do the split. I can't do that now. <laughs> <laughs> Nutritious. Nutritious food. Good for a win on Sunday. Follow the fat guy around. He'll take you to the food. No cheese sticks, so a little disappointed. I might eat light tonight. Got, got a long day tomorrow. Hey, I like that. Hey, you know the weather. <laughs> like he a, a team from Africa. <laughs> Zamunda. Zamunda, brother Newsom. I can do that. The APG 13. The chase is on. Opens Friday. With kickoff not scheduled until 8.30, the team takes advantage of the extra time. Let's make sure we do a good job rushing him, keeping him in the pocket. Cannot let him beat us with his legs. We do this, we're going to get our ass beat. If we do this right here, we will get our ass beat right there. Let's talk about the red zone. Take care of the tight end number 89. They'll mix all the per personnel groups down this area. They're going to have fireworks going on. They're going to be all jacked up. And they're going to come out there, and we're going to get after the rest right from the start. And if you're not a competitor, you won't like this, because it's going to be a 60 minutes full speed deal. The Cowboys and Eagles aren't the only teams preparing for the game. The ESPN crew has run over 130,000 feet of cable and set up 13 cameras and 12 tape machines. 12 is the uh, left side goalpost, and 13 is the right side goalpost. Even when relaxing before the game, football is never far from the players' minds. Brown sp spread out to the left, right to the right. I feel the blitz coming on that corner. Raiders come out of the split backfield. Oh, he's sacked by number 52. At least they got some good games on TV today. A lot of times they get some boring games on. The Giants and New Orleans are playing on the other station, but we play the Giants, and I probably should be watching them. They're boring. In April of 1846, the Donner Party started out from Missouri to go to California. And in Fort Bridger, Wyoming, they found a leaflet that claimed to have a shortcut to California. But the shortcut proved deadly. Men's shortcuts are like that. And frequently, Satan will come along and he'll say, go this way, it's easier. 
Men, don't take a shortcut. Don't take the easy way. Let's pray. A couple of little notes for us. Um, John Lawrence on 10. Where are you, John? Uh, McNabb, when he's in the huddle, always faces that sideline. So even though you wouldn't normally shag him, you can get capture him smiling in the huddle. Simply for the Cowboys, they want to keep their offense on the field, try to run the clock, have Emmett have success, and run on the left side of the line. It'll be a touch and go, but we'll feel it out as we're probably going to be in our first break when Donovan is introduced live to the crowd. So hopefully we're in a break so y'all can, can do a line cut of that and maybe use that coming out of the first segment. But um, the first segment is a Donovan tease. At the free game dinner, the mood is much more subdued than the night before. Kickoff is just four hours away, and the team heads for the stadium. This has been your week with the Cowboys, huh? Hopefully it's been a fun one. Hopefully tonight caps everything off that we've been working so hard for a whole week. things just to keep an eye on one uh, the Cowboys coming out testing their uh, shoes on the field similar to what the Rams did in the first game this is a little better though I mean I'm grabbing just a little that rain gonna make it even tougher but hey we ain't worried about it we ain't making no excuses damn it's cold <laughs> man it's too damn cold out here look at that rain coming down there right now huh? look at that rain pretty well how many times have we come here when it hasn't rained? Very, very few. I love this kind of weather. Love it. This is football weather right here, baby. As you can see, there's not much to do to this man. It's so easy. Oh, what a dear. You got the putty knife. It is the first game in the birthplace of liberty since September 11th, and Philadelphia, too, puts on an impressive patriotic display. Here we go now. Here we go. Sunday night football, baby. Here's what we need to do. We need to come out hot. Take the fight to them. Offense, protect the ball. Protect the football. Protect the quarterback. Make them pay for the blitz. Damn it. We'll back them off, get your ass up in there, and let's make some plays. Leave everything you have, everything you have, on the field, and I like us. Let's go. Let's go to work. We're here in Philadelphia for a big NFC East rivalry between the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles. One of those be tied with us. It don't matter who they are or where we are. All that matters is how we play. Play for four quarters if you got two, five if you got a two, five. Move we stand in or sit? Take a step in when Joe turns to me. Are we, are we standing? Are you standing? Get your step. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Woo! Come on up for the Eagles. Sunday night. That's getting better than this. That's getting better than this, baby. Mike and Orr to kick to Brian Mitchell. Good coverage now. Let's go, Cowboys. Good coverage. Here we go. Let's go. Mitchell from the three. Lost the football. Dallas hands it on the pass. Ryan Mitchell coming up, tries to cover up, and just really bumps one of his own men. The ball comes flying out and getting the Cowboys their first break of the game. Emmett Smith, the deep man in the eye, and Emmett on the toss. No way to go. in order to kick to Mitchell. Get us up when he expects to aim. Middle center! White, white! Cut! 
wobbly kick. Mitchell can't get up there, but takes it on the bounce. Take the 17. Lost the ball again. Dexter Copeland appears to be the guy downfield to knock it loose. Don't roll it. Get something here. Get something here. Go right after him. Let's go. Now it's third and eight. Here they come again. Oh, they're all up on the line of scrimmage. Everybody comes in. Anthony Wright never had a chance. He doesn't have enough time. Now we'll drive from 43, and Cedar is good again. Good. Let's go! Let's go! We'll take three. That's enough to win. That's enough to win. Even with the offense unable to move the ball, Dallas owned a six to nothing lead. And as evening turned tonight, the young team was thinking upset. But unfortunately for the Cowboys, the rain wasn't the only thing to pour down on them in the second quarter, as they were greeted with a tidal wave of green and white. You are kicking our ass, laughing his ass off. Get some pressure on him, Mike. McNabb again with tremendous protection. Wide open touchdown, Lewis. That's too easy, boy. That is too easy. Now you got to make a move from here to go get to the quarterback, all right? You guys just got to hold on, man. And, hey, block it forever, man. Block it forever, all right? Just block it forever. <laughs> points in less than a quarter. It now seemed an odd time to dig in their heels. But following the block punt, a goal line stand, meaningless in the outcome of the game, became paramount to a team trying to find its way. They do not get in. Suck it up. Let's go now. Suck it up. Let's go. Eagles were forced to kick a field goal. While hardly cause for elation, the defensive stand allowed the Cowboys to keep their chins up, inspiring them to battle through the final whistle. 
They can't break us now. Uh-uh. <laughs> up right now. Get the whole offense up. Give me the whole offense. Let's get something going. Get the fence protected and let's get the ball down the field. Let's go. There can be no pretending that there was anything glorious in a 40 to 18 defeat. But the Cowboys did win the second half. Evidence that these young players did not quit, did not surrender. A first half like that either destroys a team or shows its character. These Cowboys will be back to fight another day. Let's keep the glue together. Let's keep it together. That's all we can do. Keep it together. Man, what else you want to be doing? Nothing. Dallas walked off the field with heads held high, still keeping their eye on the prize that they have held before and yearned for again. But knowing, too, that you must also have a short memory in the NFL, for in just 12 short hours, they must begin their next countdown to kickoff.